Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This video was not supposed to be a flex in any way. And I'm saying flex in a really loose, funny term. I don't actually mean that I'm flexing these plants. However, I thought I would go around the unit and pick out some stuff that I feel like I haven't updated you on. And it just so happens that they all turned out to be sort of variegated. It wasn't really planned, you know me. Things don't have to be variegated, but I just found myself leaning towards all the variegated stuff. Because everything's just looking that little bit, you know, just that little bit sexy. Spring is coming. Plants are just starting to perk up in here. And I mean, just starting to perk up. It's been a bad winter. You feel me? It's been brutal. So in this video, I'd like to show you a few variegated beauties that I have in the shop. And these will be in no particular order, except I really want to start with the one that's over here. So I'm going to go grab it now. Right, I will have to stand back and I kind of wish that I hadn't watered it before today's video because honestly, it's quite heavy. I should have probably just tipped it out, to be honest, because it's a self-watering pot. So when I water it, it gets real heavy. But this, I'll try and hold it above me best I can. You see that there? I've had to stand back quite a way. But this beautiful boy here is Philodendron Cream Splash. Now, I've had the privilege of having a shortcut to getting this plant big. And that's mainly because I bought a lot of cuttings in maybe 2021 or something. They're maybe about six inches long. And I just took a bunch of them, put them in a pot, let them grow. And honestly, so many of them have died off. Like, don't look at this and think, oh my god, amazing. Like, this, this was like twice as full. This has literally died off. And this is kind of what we're left with. Now, I want I wanted to just show you this. One, I, I can't say I'm proud of it because honestly, I have neglected it. And one of the telltale signs, if I bring this up to the camera, can you just see how bare that is at the top? That's actually me tipping water out. Well done, Kaylee. That tells me that's quite full. Two seconds. I feel like this is a bit full. Oh, right, I've tipped that out because that is actually quite full. So yeah, you can kind of see it's been neglected by the state of it at the top of the pot, which yes, I cannot completely tip it up. We have discovered this already, but it's been pretty neglected, to be honest. It's not doing the best. It's gone. You can, again, you can see more evidence of this by actually looking at the vines. Look, do not be fooled. This is not a good looking plant. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. Considering it has been neglected for a long time, it's not the worst. But anyway, why I actually want to show you this was just to show you like the reality of having a cream splash. Okay, because I know we have Philodendron Brazil that is very similar to this. There's basically yellowish lines all the way through it and that's how it is. Now this is different. It is different. I hope you can see why it's different. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But it's not always apparent how different it is. If I just show you some of the leaves up there, hopefully it will focus on them and not me. But you can see here, if I just show you this leaf here, we get one up to the camera. Can you see they've got literally bits of cream in as well and the other tone here it's not really yellowy it's like a lime green color whereas the brazil literally it's yellow so in that sense it is nice but i just wanted to show you the reality of the plant and this is without any pruning as well because i feel like a lot of people want this here see this a lot of people look for this and they want this for cream splash but the reality of that, it's not, it's not quite the case, guys. It's still just as chaotic as a Brazil. You do get some really pretty leaves and it is nice. And I do actually prefer it to a Brazil. I'm really finicky about yellow variegation and when I enjoy it. And this is just one of those times where I think I like it more like this. So yeah, sorry, I've got hair in my mouth. I wanted to show you it just to show it in its reality because I don't think I've done that in a while. And as I say, it has grown quite well. Like if I hold it up to my body, I'm five foot four tall. So it's done well, look. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not sniffing at that. I'm literally going to have to water it now because I've tipped out so much water. It's just, it's just gone. Yeah, that's him really. This little vine here. It's funny because it's really bald here. I haven't actually tried to patch that up. It's just how it's grown and it's trying to curl around. This one's grown around here, probably because the light hits it on one side and it's tried to sort of grow its way. We have some really crappy small vines there. We have some that have got really nice and big and beautiful further down. And here we have some really pretty color as well. So it's very cute. But yeah, I just wanted to show the reality of what it actually looks like having one. No doubt you couldn't prune it and keep it more variegated, of course. Like I've left it. There's plenty of bits here that have just fully reverted. Like there's a whole, there's a whole last vine actually of just literally reversion here. But that's okay. I kind of like it sometimes. It's a bit like, you know, like we highlight our hair. This is just kind of like a low light for the plant. I kind of like it. I have a hoyer upstairs that does the same thing. And it's like a big green vine in it in amongst all the variegated stuff. Just really like it. I think it's just kind of a little bit something something. I'm probably debating doing some propagations and sticking this back in the pot and getting this a lot nicer. Let me know what you think because this was all the rage at one point. I don't think it is now. So I kind of want to know if anyone still has one and if they've managed to make a nice big bush out of it like mine. 
Right, that was quite a long update that. I just feel like I haven't had that on camera in a long time. I think I've had it on camera when I've done a tour of, of upstairs because that's where it is, it lives in the studio. But I feel like I haven't done it since. So it was really nice to bring that down and actually show it to you because it never comes off the shelf. Right, next update I want to give you is something else from the studio. And I... Gosh, I've had a relationship with this plant. I like the plant, right? We'll just cut to the chase. I like the plant. It's been overhyped and overpriced. That's literally, if I could condense my thought into a sentence, that's it. However, this plant has actually gone from strength to strength. It's a really pretty specimen. It's growing upwards in a minute, but I'm, I'm debating on what to do about that. So let me just pick it up so I can talk to you about it. Literally. How sexy is this? Okay. So if you don't know, this is Raphidophora tetrasperma variegated. And it's very, very pretty. And to be fair, the starting specimen, I actually chose this for myself because I liked how much variegation it had on it. It didn't have too much on. It had a really nice level of dispersion. Is that the right word? Do you know what I mean? It just had a really good level of variegation. And to be honest, guys, it's continued if I really gently try and tip it to the camera without wobbling it everywhere for you. If you look here, it still has a really beautiful sort of balance, could you say, of variegation on it, and I really like it. A keen ear among you may remember that I talked about having one of these in my house, and this is why it was picked. It was to get it started for my house. I always said that I kind of wanted to let these trail because I think not enough people do, and they do look very nice when they trail. They might not get as big, but that's fine. I didn't want a big plant. I'd like to be able to trail this off a window ledge or something. The way this has grown, okay, if you imagine my studio, you'll know if you've seen it, there are huge big glass windows and it's all glass fronted at the front. What's happened is it's grown like that towards the window. Like I'm, well, not at the window. Do you know what I mean? You are the window. And as a result, it's grown straight up. What I might do is I might actually turn it around this way towards the window so it starts to bow over and become a vine because I really like it. Failing that, my other option is to trim it because this, this is beautiful right now. Sort of propagate it and put it back in and make another bush. And I would actually really like your opinion on what I should do. Do I let this now maybe become a vine that starts to grow downward and look really cool? Because this will still need repotting anyway. Doesn't really change that. Or do I cut it, root it, get it going, getting sexy, put it back in and make more of a bush? Because I'm kind of like, which one do I do? Because to be honest, if I do chop it, I can't really just chop that and leave it. It's going to need a bit more than that, which I can do. But do you see what I'm saying? If I chop this, it's going to have to go all the way back really to a little stump again, see? And be propped that way. It's too difficult for me to manipulate this on camera, but you've got to trust me when I say that the spread of variegation on it is spot on. It is literally spot on what I look for in a variegated plant. It's maybe about, if I could put it as a percentage, maybe 40% at best. It, it splits between 30 and 40% and I just think it's spot on because it grows quickly, but it still looks pretty and it doesn't burn too much. So that's him anyway. Little quick update because he is brilliant. Let me just... Show you that up again. Look at the spread of variegation on that. Do you see what I'm saying? This one here is the most variegated leaf I've got. The rest of them are just a bit lower. And it's just how I like my plants. I don't want them to be insanely variegated. I just want something that's easy. Do you know what I mean? When you've got loads of variegation, it's not that easy. It's not gonna grow as quick, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, you know? I have three more plants for you today. So the next plant, right, the next plant, I've shown this to you before. I have, I have. I've shown it a lot, to be honest. I've probably flexed it a lot. I'm really sorry. It's just, it was a wishlist plant for me. I think I got quite a good deal on it. I was worried about it when I got it because I've explained this before, but basically the way variegation works, if you get like a half moon leaf, it's really touch and go as to how good your yield is going to be if it's come from a cutting. But it just so happens that it's gone sp what on? It's gone perfectly after this cutting and I really want to show you it. I think you've seen it since it's had maybe, maybe one leaf less than what it has, maybe two leaves less than what it has. I just want you to see how sexy it is. So I'm just going to pot it a second. I'm going to put it in a pot and I'm going to hold it up for you. <sighs> Do you remember? Do you remember this guy? Do you remember this guy? So this, if you can't tell, this is my variegated philodendron florida dragon. And as I say, it's been on my wish list for so long. For so long, I thought, hey, I'm not paying like three, four thousand for it. I won't, I won't do that. I can't remember how long it was ago now. Three, four months ago. You know what it is? I don't even know when I got this. But I've had a few cuttings out of it. Can't see any off the top of my head. There are some over there though, but this is like the best one. This is the head cutting. And I just want to show you the leaves because, mwah, so good. So this, by the way, is just an old leaf. It just obviously just got snapped in shipping. But since then, we've had this leaf here which I'm sure you can appreciate is just fantastic. Then we have had this leaf here from it, 
boom, very beautiful, is it not? But just recently we've had this, and I'm actually quite pleased about this. I'll explain that in a minute. It's going to be very difficult to pull this. Can you see that there? So it is actually a bit less variegation than some of the others, but this was getting a bit worrying anyway. Like, yes, this is gorgeous, right? This makes a great Instagram picture. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? The long term, it's not great. And honestly, the amount of variegation in these stems is crazy. It's crazy. Check this out. Can you see it? That's all variegation, guys. Look, if I rotate it, you should probably be able to see it there. Literally, so I'm trying not to bang my mic. It's all variegation. There's a lot of it. So I'm actually really pleased to see this because we just need a little bit, a little bit of green coming back because it's going to get too much. And it might still get too much. Don't get me wrong. So all in all, I wanted to show you this because if you can see these three leaves, <gasps> Ooh, that's really, really pleasing, isn't it? Yep, I'm dropping lecker. great. I just wanted to show you this because it tends to not necessarily go like this when you get variegated stuff. And it, it's literally the number one thing I complain about when someone sells a cutting of something and you've got to grow it back and it looks a certain way. Obviously it's a gamble anyway, but when you get things like the half moon leaf here, that gamble goes up tenfold because what tends to happen, honestly, about 80% of the time, you'll get an all green leaf and an all yellow leaf, an all green leaf, an all yellow leaf, and you'll just have the worst time. I'm having that same time now. It's back there. You probably can't see where it is. Can you see where it is? Literally somewhere, I can't do this on camera. It's somewhere over there. I have a Thormatophyllum African fantasy that's variegated and that was half and half. And that's now growing an all green leaf, an all yellow leaf. So honestly, this is very not good. And to be fair, when whoever sold this, they've had that problem. I'm pretty sure this was all green. Can't confirm, but I'm pretty sure it, the whole thing was. So they've got one good looking one and gone, oh, let's get rid because we know how it do. To get this from that is literally amazing. It's literally amazing. So I had to show you because I'm so proud of it and I just have to let you know it doesn't always go that way. So be really careful when you're buying variegated stuff. That's my beautiful philodendron golden dragon. And it's, it's very much golden right now. This is lovely. And if you want to know what color this is, by the way, it's not white, it's not yellow, it's that lovely cream color. So it's very, very, very similar to a Philadelphia in Florida beauty. It's practically the same. One more time, look, literally. Oof. Dude, dude. I'm gonna have to hold this one up in the pot because it's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm gonna have to put my thumb behind it, mainly because it's propagation and it's, you can see it in the frame. It's propagation and it's only got one aerial root at the minute. So it's, it really is wobbly. And I've actually repotted it this morning to try and get it more sturdy, but it's just not got enough about it. But this here, if you can't already tell, this is Monstera White Monster, I do believe. So long story short, a white monster starts off like this. It comes out a whitey color. This is starting to turn green now. It does come out more of a minty white and gradually it will go green. Mine, you can still see some traces of white. Hopefully it will focus. It's really hard because it literally slips in the pot. You see there, it'll have some traces of green, almost like a tie, almost not. And then eventually, does it keep the traces of green? Oh my God, this is so wiggly. I may as well depot it. Hang on, I'm actually gonna depot it, guys. That is pointless trying to hold that up for you because now I can actually hold it. So yeah. Right, oh, so much easier. I don't recommend doing this, but it's so much easier. See there, we get eventually, if you've ever wanted to know what they do, I would pretty much call that zero. There are like the most minute flecks of white in it. And I mean like microscopic white. Guessing they'll all go green at some point. But yeah, it does start out mintier than this. I know this looks lime green. No, it, it's starting to turn green now. So that's kind of what it does. I believe it is large foam, if anyone's curious. I do have another one of these. I just thought, you know what? I always pick up the other one, so I'll pick up this one. And it's just starting to fenestrate, which is really, really good. Hopefully it will grow well. It's been cut semi-recently and we have a little aerial here and a little one there that's grown a little bit more. So I'm not gonna linger on him. I just wanted to make sure that you knew what it was because I know they're kind of circulating a little bit and you know the difference between that and a normal one star. So if you don't care, don't bother. If you don't care about this and you want something large, just go for the regular green large form. Absolutely cool. I do have a video on, I've said this a lot, on different types of Monstera sports. So if you're looking for something like a Monstera Deliciosa, I have a video on loads of different ones you can go for. Whether they are just green and they're just a different shape, whether they're like this, whether they have white variegation, yellow variegation, both in one leaf, mint, green on green, you name it. So I'll leave that down below for you if you're interested. But yeah, I just wanted to show you him. He is one of a couple that I have. And I don't think it's technically variegated, so I've probably cheated there a little bit, but he's still cute. He's still cute. Right, I've got a bigger pot for my last one because he's nice. 
He's real nice. Not ideal this. I probably shouldn't have bothered with the outer part. I just don't like things dripping on me. I don't like things dripping on me. But do you remember this boy? Hopefully you do. Hopefully you can see what he is. He is a wonderful Monstera Deliciosa mint. Now, which one is best to show you the mint? Is there much minty? Yes. I want to show you what it looks like close up because again, there's a lot of mint going around. The question is, is it real? Is it not real? And it's really important when you're buying these things to know the difference. Personally, I think if you can't see the mintiness on a, on a Monstera, then maybe hold off buying it unless you can see a mother plant, if the seller's reputable, all those things. And I only say it, guys, because normal variegated Monstera Albo versus this, there's a big price difference. I'm sure we most of us, you know, know that. But for those of you that don't, you Huge difference in price. Huge difference in price. I'm not saying everyone makes it up, but just be careful when you do and make sure that what you're getting is what you want. So the mint close-up, and I like this plant, and another reason I want to show you this plant is because it shows you what the mint looks like when it comes through, because it doesn't always look minty, which is kind of why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm just going to show you the plant first, and we'll talk about it. So let me show you this. It is variegated, but if you look closely, there, if you can see, the white has, and I will get really far up to the camera now, it has like green running through it and that's sort of what makes the mint up and it, it does get really, I don't know what you could call that. It's a bit similar to how a white monster turns. It's a bit like the white monster, except it's in patches in terms of how it works. Only the white monster, it does go green. So I guess in essence, it's nothing like a white monster. Scratch what I've just said. Anyway, there's a leaf below that that is, it's faded down a bit, but it's still there. And I, the, the variegation should stay there. I don't know if you can see this because the way it's potted in the pot, sort of, that's just a bit of a crap one, really. And then we do have this one here, which if I very gently tip it, and I mean gently because that's gonna happen, there's gonna be lecker everywhere. Again, you should be able to hopefully see how this variegation tends to look. I just put it up to the camera. Sorry guys, I'm doing my best. You see what I mean? It's just, it's bitty. It's bitty. It's kind of weird. But I want to show you what this looks like when it comes in, because it's not super obvious. And I will bring this up to the camera. This is gorgeous, by the way. This is so beautiful. It's got all these fenestrations in. It just looks really cute. I believe this is the head cutting. That's why it's looking kind of nice. And as you can see, when you get a big cutting, you know, the three leaves are already here. You can probably see the leaf that is born from these bigger ones. That's the downsizing you'll get when you cut it. Obviously, because I start off so large, this doesn't look juvenile, if you know what I mean. But if you bought something that started off this size, your next leaf might look a lot more juvenile. It's just the perils of propagation, really. But if I show you this, and I really hope this comes off on camera. Sorry if the lighting is a bit much. At the minute, it, it actually looks, I don't know if it does on camera, but it actually looks quite cream. You can see though, in the variegation, I will do my best to hold it up. You can see that there is a little, it's really hard to explain, a little something something at work. And it really does come into play at the bottom of the leaf. Let me try my best. Sorry if this blows out. Genuinely sorry if this blows out. But you can see that weird bittiness in it. Up here, you can see it less, but it is there. But I'm struggling to see it with my eyes, if you know what I mean. So I know the camera's probably not going to pick it up in, in Chanson Hill. I will show you it close up. Hopefully it is focusing. I can't even see into the lens at the minute. But can you see what I'm saying? They can look a bit different when they come in. So try not to worry. I guess if you've got one, just look for that. I mean, I'm literally going to call it bittiness or graininess or whatever to the leaf because that's what they need to have. So although this looks quite creamy, I have every faith it's going to turn into this because I've got a few over there, by the way. I don't know how many mints I've got. I've got a half moon one over here, which is incredibly pretty. And that started off looking slightly cream, but the mint's kind of taking over it now and it's sort of doing its thing. But that's kind of what they look like. So one, I wanted to flex this beautiful leaf because it is gorgeous and I should probably Instagram it, totally. But two, just sort of like a thing on, here's a mint, this is how it works. This is what happens when it downsizes and this is what happens when the leaf grows through. It's not inherently going to be just mint straight away. You know what I mean? Like a variegated Monstera, the elbow, it is what it is when it comes out. This is one of these situations where it isn't quite what it is when it comes out. It does have to harden off a little bit. Apologies if you already knew that, but I just thought I would make sure people did know that because I don't like the idea of people buying things and then getting upset or disappointed. Do you know what I mean? I think if I have these plants and it, it's good to be able to tell you just, I don't know, stuff that I pick up on that I think a buyer would want to know. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to put that down. It's quite heavy. 
And that was my little variegated update video. As I say, it wasn't supposed to be variegated. It's just the more I picked up, the more I realized it was variegated. So that's my little update video for you. Let me know what you think on any of these things that I've mentioned. The cutting the Raphidophora tetrasperma, that I need to know what to do with that. The cream splash, I probably will just propagate it and shove it back in. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope I gave you some joy in showing you all these variegated beauties that have grown with me for some time now. So I'm very, very happy. I hope you have a great weekend as well. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that you enjoy the content that I make. And if you are not already subscribed, I would absolutely adore you if you could click that little button that says subscribe on it. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will see you undoubtedly in the next one. Bye.